Hi and welcome to John's Maths Book. In this video, we're going to be finding the volume of a cone using double integration and polar coordinates. If you like the video, then please hit the like button and I'd be delighted and honoured if you'd subscribe to the channel. Without further ado, let's go over to the whiteboard. We are tasked with finding the volume inside a cone and above the XY plane. The volume of the cone is given by Z or Z, depending where you come from, is equal to 2 minus the square root of x squared plus y squared. The xy plane is given by z equals 0. Here's an image of the cone in 3D. As you can see, the cone is shown in red, with the xy plane shown in purple. The first step in finding the volume is to define the region with which the volume is above. So we need to find where our two equations are equal. We have both equations in terms of z, so we can equate the two. This gives us 0 equals 2 minus the square root of x squared plus y squared. Adding the square root of x squared plus y squared to both sides of the equation gives us the square root of x squared plus y squared is equal to 2, and then Square in both sides gives us x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. Sketching the region in the xy plane, we see that it's a circle with a radius of 2 and centered where x and y are both equal to 0. The next step is to convert the region given by x squared plus y squared equals 4 from Cartesian to polar coordinates. To do this, we set x equals r cos theta and y equals r sine theta. This gives r squared times cos squared theta plus r squared times sine squared theta is equal to 4. Removing the r squared, we get r squared multiplied into the bracket of cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 4. Using the trig identity, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. We're left with r squared is equal to 4. Taking the positive square root of both sides, we get r is equal to 2. Now let's look at what we need to do to find the volume. The volume is a double integral over the region r. This sums infinitesimally small pieces of area shown here as dA. These have been multiplied by a height function f of xy, which gives infinitesimally small slices of volume. Let's now take a closer look at what happens when we sum or integrate in the r direction. When we integrate or sum in the r direction, this will represent the inner of the two integrals. This diagram shows a sector of the region capital R. The angle it makes is infinitesimally small and is denoted by d theta. Within the sector, we have an infinitesimally small piece of area denoted by dA. The size of each piece of area is the length multiplied by the width. So in this case, dr is the height and r d theta the width. So dA equals r dr d theta. To find the total area of the sector, we integrate or sum in the r direction. If we multiply an infinitesimally small piece of area dA by height, we get an infinitesimally small slice of volume which is the height function, so f of xy, multiplied by r dr d theta. We can now define the inner integral. It has a lower limit of r equals 0 as we begin at the origin of the circle. The upper limit of the integral is where r meets the circle, and we know the equation of the circle in polar coordinates is r equals 2. So the upper limit of the inner integral is 2. I've marked in the inner integral and its limits. I'll deal with the height function shortly, but let's first find the limits of the outer integral. So that's when r rotates about the angles of theta. To do this, let's first visualize what happens as r rotates about theta around the region r. As r rotates, it begins at theta equal to zero and advances 360 degrees or 2 pi radians around the circle. Each sector represents an angle of d theta. By summing each of the infinitesimally small sectors, we get our total volume as we multiply the area by a height function. We do this by integrating beginning at 0 and ending at 2 pi radians. Now let's deal with the height component f of xy. 
we have two functions between which we are calculating volume. We need to subtract one function from another to determine the height component. To facilitate this, we need to work out which of the two functions is the larger when x and y are zero. So which is the top function and which is the bottom function? It's probably easy to see in this example, but won't always be this easy. Starting with the function z equals 2 minus the square root of x squared plus y squared, if we substitute x equals 0 and y equals 0, we're left with z equals 2. And our other function is z equals a constant 0. So as we can see, the function z equals 2 minus the square root of x squared plus y squared is the top function because it produces the largest value at x equals 0 and y equals 0. Now, if we subtract our bottom function, which is 0, from our top function, which is 2 minus the square root of x squared plus y squared, we're left with 2 minus square root of x squared plus y squared. This gives us our height component. Now, converting the height component to polar coordinates from Cartesian coordinates, we substitute r cos theta for x and r sine theta for y. So when we do this, we have 2 minus the square root of r squared multiplied by cos squared theta plus r squared times sine squared theta. And simplifying this, we have 2 minus the square root of r squared into the bracket of cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. Using the trig identity, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1, we're left with 2 minus the square root of r squared. And taking the positive square root, we have 2 minus r, which is our height component. So now we have our double integral. So our inner integral goes from r equals 0 to r equals 2. And we're integrating 2 minus r, r d r d theta. And our outer integral goes from theta equals 0 to theta equals 2 pi. So starting with the inner integral, we're integrating 2 minus r, r dr, between r equals 0 and r equals 2. Now the antiderivative of 2 minus r times r is r squared minus r cubed over 3, and we need to evaluate that between 0 and 2. So when we plug 2 in, we get 4 minus 8 divided by 3, and when we plug 0 in, we get 0, so it's minus 0. So this leaves 4 divided by 3, or 4 thirds. And evaluating our outer integral, we're evaluating 4 thirds d theta between the limits of theta equals 0 and theta equals 2 pi. So the antiderivative of 4 thirds is 4 thirds theta, and we need to evaluate that between 0 and 2 pi. So first plugging in the 2 pi, we have 4 thirds times 2 pi. And plugging in 0, we get 0, so it's minus 0. So our final answer is 8 thirds times pi. Let's quickly verify this result using the equation for the volume of a cone, which is V equals pi r squared times h divided by 3. In our case, r is equal to 2 and h is equal to 2. So evaluating this, we get V equals pi times 4 times 2 over 3, and therefore V is equal to 8 pi divided by 3.